In September of 2000, this picture made the news. This was a picture of a levitating frog that was essentially demonstrating something known as magnetic levitation. And here, the levitation was achieved by using an extremely powerful magnet. You can even see the video of this happening right here. And this was a direct demonstration of the effect known as diamagnetism. Basically, pretty much everything can become magnetic and levitate if placed inside a powerful enough magnet. And so back in September of 2000, Andrew Geim and Michael Berry won an award for this. But it was not a Nobel Prize. It was actually what we refer to as a Nobel Prize. A more satirical version of the famous Nobel Prize that's awarded every single year in various scientific fields, but when the research is maybe just a little bit unusual and maybe a little bit funny. And specifically, these achievements have to first make people laugh and then make them think. And well, just like every year, this September, we actually now had 10 more awards in 10 separate fields. And so in this video, I actually wanted to explore some of them because quite a few of these studies, despite being somewhat funny, are also kind of mind-boggling. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss the 2024 in Nobel Prize Awards, briefly discussing each study and what was achieved, and of course, maybe potential implications for the future. And though obviously this type of an award might sound kind of useless and potentially just a waste of time, in reality it actually isn't. Turns out that over the years, quite a few of these studies, because they suddenly became popular, led to some important advances and practical achievements. One that comes to mind was actually from a study that investigated mosquitoes, with the discovery being that our vampire friends here seem to have a preference for a certain smell of human feet and also certain smell of certain cheeses. So basically they were attracted to human feet and a specific type of cheese that apparently, when used, can actually lead to a mosquito control. And so following this bizarre discovery, cheese smell was actually used in certain locations in Africa to try to fight malaria quite successfully. So yeah, bizarre, funny, unusual, but definitely not useless. And I would even go as far as to say that um, way more fun than the actual Nobel Prize. And that's because it also involves a lot of bizarre rituals, such as for example throwing paper airplanes, and a lot of somewhat funny unusual ceremonies. And so this is actually one of those events that one day I would love to attend. But let's discuss the winners from 2024 and of course the potential achievements, because even this year there were some really bizarre discoveries. Although not all discoveries were coming from recent studies. And actually two of these were from much older studies and were awarded posthumously. And the first award was to the famous psychologist B.F. Skinner. The famous behavior psychologist, famous for his research on various types of conditioning. But in this case, it actually involves a bizarre study involving pigeons in order to learn if they can maybe be used to potentially guide missiles by residing inside of those missiles. And so here we had this unusual study, Pigeons in a Pelican, that basically focused on the research involving Project Pigeon. A really bizarre idea to use pigeons as a kind of a guidance system. And while well, here, B.F. Skinner was awarded the Peace Prize for his research on pigeons inside missiles. Yep, that's the first one. The second one, also based on research from a long time ago, was awarded to W.E. Peterson and Fordis Fly for their research in biology on studies involving cows and why cows sometimes drop their milk. But to basically study this, they apparently conducted super strange experiments where they would take a cow, put a cat on top of this cow, and then explode a paper bag next to this cat, eventually discovering that this led to cows producing less milk. Um, yeah. And so this super strange experiment involving cows, cats, and paper bags resulted in a Nobel Prize in biology. Then we had our prize in anatomy. And this one goes to the researcher that potentially conducted one of the, uh, I'm really sorry to say that, useless studies in science. A study on hair whorls. And in this case, focusing on the way hair whorls swirl on various heads, clockwise or counterclockwise. And comparing this to people in the Northern Hemisphere compared to the Southern Hemisphere. And while the research suggests that, turns out, the scalp hair whorls seem to prefer counterclockwise direction in the Southern Hemisphere compared to the North. So yeah, great stuff. But I think the funniest part in the study is the conclusion at the end. Here, the researcher pleads for the large-scale epidemiological assessment involving much larger populations 
so we can actually learn about this even more. Because I guess hair whorls are very important. Anyway, moving on to chemistry. And here, Tess Harrimans, Antoine de Bleu, Daniel Bond and Sander Wooderson decided to get some worms drunk. And then discovered that you can actually separate drunk worms from the sober worms by using a technique known as chromatography. Which I guess is really important for um, discovering if worms are drinking and driving or something. Or possibly for some other reasons um, we still cannot imagine. But anyway, chemistry goes to the drunken worms. With the next award being in botany. And this one is actually kind of intriguing. As a matter of fact, it's intriguing because of the implications from this particular study. Here this was a research on a plant known as Boquila trifoliolata. A not particularly unusual and not particularly interesting plant that mostly grows in South America. But turns out that this is also the only known plant to us that actually tends to mimic other plants. And specifically it can mimic the leaves of certain plants, changing its own shape quite dramatically. And sometimes it can actually even mimic several plants all at once. But interestingly, in this case, it doesn't even have to touch the plant in order to mimic its appearance. And though right now nobody actually knows why and how this works, and why this plant even possesses this function, Jacob White and Philip Yamashita won the e Nobel Prize in Botany for basically discovering that this plant also imitates plastic plants, or basically fake plants. In other words, it tends to mimic anything it sees around itself, bizarrely assuming the shape of any plant near it. With a study basically concluding that this is maybe the first ever evidence for some kind of a plant-based vision. Maybe using some kind of an optical detector, or maybe using some kind of a chemical detector. Either way though, this is probably one of the most intriguing studies of 2024 and definitely requires additional investigations. The next award was in medicine. And this was for Levin Schenk, Tamin Fadai and Christian Bouchel, who essentially discovered that fake medicines that induce painful side effects can actually be even more effective than fake medicines that don't produce painful side effects. A somewhat bizarre discovery, I guess, but a discovery nevertheless. And so basically next time you take a fake pill that causes you some pain, it might be more effective overall in terms of placebo effects compared to the one that does absolutely nothing. Intriguingly, in 2008, there was an actual price in medicine that demonstrated that expensive fake medicines tend to be more effective than cheap fake medicines. Which of course reminds us of the power of the placebo effect. And if you want to learn more about this, check out one of the videos in the description. Then the award in physics went to James Lau for his unusual long-running study involving dead fish and specifically dead trout and their swimming abilities in various conditions. And turns out that this is actually a multi-part publication basically involving these unusual dead fish. Although here this is actually kind of useful because it's basically a study on hydrodynamics. But a much more interesting award was in physiology. And this went to Ryo Okabe and his team from Japan. This was a really bizarre study that discovered that many different mammals can easily breathe through their anuses. And here you just need to see one of the pictures. This was literally a study involving mammals not breathing through their nose, but breathing through their butts. And apparently they totally could. And though this might sound just like a bizarre experiment, something out of a, some kind of a science fiction novel, turns out it does have its use. Specifically for patients unable to breathe through their mouth, such as for example in certain types of extremely difficult infections. And so here, animals' butts just discovered something really important. We basically now know that we can technically use respirators on people's butts, not just their faces. And technically, this should work just as well. Although I guess a uh, side note. Don't try this at home, please. Anyway, congratulations Dr. Okabe for one of the strangest studies in medicine in the last few years. Then we have an award in probability that's actually weird for, I guess, several reasons. And I think the strangest part is how many researchers were involved. Here we had a team of 50 researchers performing 350,000 experiments to show just one thing. A flip of a coin has a slightly higher chance to land on the same side as the initial side before the flip, essentially indicating a slight bias when it comes to coin flips. But because it involved so many researchers and so many experiments, that's why they won the award in probability. Just a little bit bizarre and just a little bit unusual, but I guess still fun. And the last award was in what's known as demography. 
Here this goes to so Justin Newman for discovering that a lot of super centenarians, or essentially people over 100 years old, tend to come from a lot of different areas with either no birth certificates or a lot of clerical errors, pension fraud, or even short lifespans. In other words, suggesting that fraud and error seem to generate extreme age records, at least in the United States. Which also suggests that maybe not all of these people are as old as they claim. And so there you have it. 10 types of research awarded the Nobel Prize of 2024, with a few of these being really, really strange, really bizarre, and at least a couple of these being potentially groundbreaking. Which also means that we'll probably come back and talk more about some of this research in some of the future videos. Until then, you can find all of the links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. Uh, I've been sitting on my butt for so long, I'm gonna go breathe a little bit, you know what I mean?